Have you ever had a lucid dream where you realize that you can do anything? Whatever you wanted to, your brain could create that reality for you. Different locations, people, events, and scenarios. Take a look at this footage. This is from a classic video game in the 90s called Doom. But this version of it is unlike anything that we've ever seen before. By the way, if you're happy that they use Doom specifically for this, hit the like button and let's continue. So this is a project from Google DeepMind and Tel Aviv University. This project itself is called Game Engine, and it's a game engine, just like any other computer game. It's the computer stuff in the background that makes this game run. For all the other games up until this point, the game engine was run on code, as in someone wrote the code and that code is gonna be determining what happens in the game. But this little video game is fundamentally different. As the researchers put it, we present Game Engine. The first game engine powered entirely by a neural model that enables real-time interaction. The whole thing is running on an AI image generation model. So if you've ever tried Midjourney or Stable Diffusion, this is similar to that. And in fact, this is running on Stable Diffusion. This model generates images that simulate the gameplay at 20 frames per second. When you use the keyboard commands to run around, to shoot, to open doors, it generates the actual outcome of that action in real time. The model itself was trained on a massive amount of Doom gameplay. Unfortunately, this game came out a really long time ago and there's just not that much quality label data. And to train AI models like this, we usually need data pairs. So for example, pictures of animals with text describing the animal, like pictures of cats labeled cats or dogs labeled dogs. Here the labeled data was Doom gameplay footage and the keyboard actions that the players were using at that moment. Then they press the arrow keys, the space bar key, the control key, etc. And if you know what the control key did back in Doom without looking it up, let me know. But the point is that there just wasn't a lot of this label data available. So the researchers had two options. One was to pay a lot of different people to play Doom while their gameplay sessions and the keys that they were pushing were recorded. That's one way to generate all that data, but it's just not that scalable. It's expensive, it's time consuming, and Google shareholders are probably gonna question if this is the best use of company money. So the researchers had to get creative here. You know Twitch, the video game streaming platform where people play video games to a live audience? I feel like that was probably scoffed at when it first came out. I can just imagine kids having this conversation with their parents about their future career plans. Hey mom, dad, I'm gonna sit in my room and play video games for eight to 16 hours a day. And I'm gonna broadcast it over the internet so people can watch me play this video game. And how do you expect to be earning a living from this, son? Well, people have the option of paying me if they enjoy what I do. You mean they're gonna give you a few bucks like a street performer? No, 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 no. This is gonna be like a monthly recurring billing sort of thing. Now, some of those kids are probably making millions right now. And I gotta say, I did not see that one coming. But the Google AI researchers decided to create a bunch of these AI agents. And each one of the agents were tasked with playing Doom while their gameplay and their actions were recorded. So it's kind of like Twitch, but with AI streamers streaming 24 hours a day of Doom. But while Twitch streamers' whole goal in life is to get as many subs and views as possible, these AI Doom Marines had a very different life goal. In fact, you can see it here written out in plain English. This is the reward function that governs the bot's behavior. They were trained using reinforcement learning. They would do whatever they could to get positive reinforcement, aka take actions to get positive points. And they would avoid as much as possible the negative reinforcement. So for example, getting hurt was just negative 100 points, but taking down an enemy was a positive 1000 points. In this case, you would expect that the bots would think it's okay to get hit a few times in order to take down a foe, but you don't want them getting overly confident and dying. To put the fear of God in them, the negative 5000 points penalty was added. Basically, 
仲在。睇你嘅脾气都几可爱，你知唔知本道嘅功夫同你点比啊？嗯。你知唔知本道会杀人啊？吓、啊。咁你系咪想死？嗯。<笑> So these AI streamers over time got really good at playing Doom, and it produced a lot of high-quality data. This was very inexpensive and scalable, and that data was used to train the image generation model to produce realistic-looking Doom gameplay. It would basically predict what sequence of images would come next after a player pressed a certain key. If the player pushed the shoot key, the AI model had seen so much footage of what happens when that key is pressed that it was able to predict what that would look like. Over time, it got very good at predicting the next frames of what would happen in any given situation. And by predict, I mean that it actually produced that footage in 20 frames per second, real time. And if you think about it, 20 frames a second is not that bad. For example, there's a lot of Hollywood movies that use 24 frames per second in order to get that cinematic look. In the end, the researchers played quick clips of the gameplay to human judges. They showed clips of the neural net generated video side by side with real Doom gameplay footage, and the judges were asked to determine which one was real and which was the AI. And the judges had a really hard time guessing which one was which. They were able to recognize the AI generated video at a slightly higher rate than if they had just blindly guessed, but not by much. So, what does this mean for video games in the future? What does this mean for developers? Will powerful gaming consoles and gaming rigs be replaced by neural nets, potentially dreaming up entire worlds for us to play out in real time? Let me know what you think in the comments. My name is Natalia. Please subscribe, and I'll see you soon.